pandas. <laughs> They're my daughter's favorite animal. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Oh, well, that's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take more than a cute bear to knock them off of the top spot. <laughs> oh, but did you know, thanks to the incredible conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. <laughs> Amazing! That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So, this zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. It really speaks to our reputation, a reputation that you're going to be in charge of maintaining, along with all the uh, general maintaining, too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> it is vitally important. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although, <laughs> perhaps more pressingly, <laughs> the eyes of Nancy are on you, too. <laughs> Welcome to China. This is Bernie's brand new panda celebration zoo. So new, in fact, that it's not quite finished. But we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. Obviously, the giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo, and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Let's go and have a look at it. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. And now enter animal camera mode. Oh, doesn't it just warm the cockles of your heart? So cute! Did you know that giant pandas, or Ailaropoda melanoleuca, if we're being formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears? They can actually eat up to 38 kilos of bamboo a day. <laughs> Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluffball has that kind of appetite yet, though. Oh no, I just got word from one of our keepers that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first and that they're displaying signs of disease. We'll have to move them into quarantine to stop the infection from spreading to the other animals. To do that, go to the highlighted habitat, find the infected animal and then select them to bring up their information panel. Good. Now choose Move and then transfer them into quarantine. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Oh, phew. That's a relief. Now that we've stopped the infection from spreading any further, we need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then return to his habitat. I've already highlighted where I'd like you to build it, so why don't we head over there?
In order to build the vet surgery, choose Facilities, Staff Facilities and then Vet Surgeries. That's the job. Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Hmm. Yes, diseases can spread through a habitat quite easily, especially if the water inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. As it happens, I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down and the water in the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility for you, so you should go and check it out. Select the water treatment facility to bring up its information panel. Yes, I don't think you need a degree in mechanics to tell that this thing's thoroughly banjaxed. <laughs> Use Call Mechanic to bring an expert over to fix it for us. So, just to explain, water treatment facilities work in a similar manner to power sources, in that they have a radius of influence around them. That means any body of water which is even partly within that radius will be cleaned automatically. Also, like power sources, if they get damaged, that radius of influence will shrink, meaning that it might stop cleaning water sources which were only just within its reach. If you want to check how much of your zoo is covered by your water treatment facilities, then there's a heat map you can use to see the coverage. That way, you can quickly spot problem areas and rectify the issue. Good work. Now that the water treatment facility has been repaired, the water will be cleaned up in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> you can also use mechanics to repair power facilities, transport rides, spins, benches, signs, and, as you already know, habitat barriers. Now, I'll be honest, I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had, so I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it. And even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. I'd like you to start some research into border telosis. Disease research can be found in vet research, so head over to your research centre and get one of the vets researching it.
Lovely job. Once that research is complete, I expect we'll send that disease packing in no time. Whew! That was a close-run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible outbreak of viral gastroenteritis here at Goodwin House. Although, luckily, <laughs> that was just limited to me and my wife. Right. Now that we've got all our urgent tasks in hand, we can start to focus on the guests and improving their time in the park. You see, you can also do research into new and improved guest facilities, transport rides as well as new types of barrier and other things via the workshop. I've highlighted the workshop for you, so head over there, select it and then choose View Workshop.